I'm Arthur Motes, and I'm here to tell you about my new book, The Motes Theory of Life. If you haven't picked up a copy yet, I strongly encourage you to. This book not only is a fun read, but it's a guide to helping you become a person of impact and inspiration. If you are ready to take the next step to improving not only your life, but those around you as well, go get a copy of The Motes Theory of Life, and it's available at MotesTheory.com. What's up, what's up? It's the Arthur Most Experience with Deke. I'm Arthur Motes, and that's my main man, Deke. What's up, man? I'm happy, first off, bro. Why? We always talk about your outfits, sex symbol, Deke, taco meat out, which I'm loving, by the way. All right. It's beautiful. <laughs> taco meat hanging, big, burly beard. Yeah. Just a man's man. Like, you, you got that going. Yeah, yeah. But for me, on the other end, you know, I take a little more animated, a little more cartoonish approach, and I happen to have one. Yeah, you always have theme shirts. Oh, man, this just dropped right here. I'm just so happy. It's an Arthur shirt, and obviously, Arthur is my favorite cartoon guy. You know that. I so the fact that, that Arthur is it wearing Arthur, yeah. yeah, I just I just wanted to put that out there that I got my shirt. I feel good. And I got to shout out my people at Steel City, too, man. I literally saw them on IG. They were dropping this, <laughs> and I did what anybody would do. Not either. This isn't even sponsored. No, no. I did what anybody this would do, This is just man. in your heart. I went out there, and I blew the comment up. I'm done. Oh, that's fire. I need that. And it became available. And now I have it. And I'm so happy, because I love Arthur. That's Touches awesome. my heart, I, I would have guessed someone from Family Guy, I thought. Nah, nah. <laughs> family Guy's dope. Uh, but I'm, for, I tell you, I'm more of an American dad than Family Guy, just because the whole American dad, I'm like, it's perfect. It fits me, just minus the alien, <laughs> but it's cool. But yeah, man. Anytime I get a chance to rock Arthur, I feel like I got it. You know what I'm saying? It just touched my heart. And the fact that it's a Pittsburgh brand that was doing it, I said, you know what? I'll throw that in there because we can. It makes sense. Dude. Yeah. So so I just I just felt real good about myself right there. Man, I'm sorry. I just, I just had to do that. But other than that, man, I'm still feeling awesome though, baby. It's, it's another jam-packed weekend. We got big time ball this weekend. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Uh, yes. So Steelers Browns preview. Obviously, we're doing that here. <sighs> Absolutely. It's big time, baby. It's big time. Can I get to this real quick? Knock it out, go ahead. Can it, can I I guess jump the hot topic button we, all the way up to the front here? I thought we were gonna start with that. No what? Uh, you were ready for it. I was waiting on you. <laughs> we haven't even got to a topic. We literally just talked about your taco meat, okay, my shirt, and then we was about to progress into this because it ties into what I really love. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's Bell being released by the Jets. Is uh-huh. that what you're thinking? Absolutely. Well, is that what you're thinking? Yeah, well, here's the thing. Bell's moving quick, and rightfully so. Did you see he narrowed his list down, right? I know. I was thinking Steelers, and it's just not happening. Uh, but but see, you were thinking Steelers. I said, okay, he, he could go Steelers. I could see that. But I said, personally, I didn't think either side needed each other. I didn't think the Steelers. It wasn't a need. Right. Need, need. But but there is a team on it, that list. Did you see he lowered his list? You saw the three he had on there? Real quick, though. Could I ask you beforehand? Just because everything's moved so quick uh-huh. where he's going to sign today, probably. Mm-hmm. Or I didn't get your answer for this. Would you have wanted him with the Steelers? Would you have been good with that? Um, if it worked out, sure. Because remember, people made it big. People tried to paint L. Bell in the A.B. picture. Or in the A-B category. They were two totally different situations. One, when we talk about A-B, it was more so the strength of power, right? Him wanting to be the guy. Obviously, Ben is the guy. And then from there, you deal with some of the antics of, okay, was well, he going to show up? Is he going to have an attitude? Is he going to throw something on the side? And like That type of stuff was what A-B was doing. L. Bell, four years of being his teammate. Not once did we see that. And I know people say, well, he was late. to He didn't show up to the Jaguars game, the, 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 the walkthrough before the Jaguars game. I'm sure by now we've all seen that numerous people have missed said walkthroughs before games, and it has zero to do with your performance because we saw, if you remember in that game, he actually dominated. He looked really good, had the big time catch over Telvin Smith in the end zone. I mean, or Tevin Smith in the end zone. So, no, I said it right. Yeah, Telvin Smith, excuse me. So, (laughs) when when I thought, like, when that whole narrative was created that Bell's a bad team, I was like, no, that's not the case. And then they went to the narrative of, well, because he lied to the the players about when he was going to come back, that's why they don't want him in there. No, no, no. Now, when you asked Ramon and Pouncey at the time, yeah, they said what they said, but you've also seen them go on record after the fact and say that, hey, man, we're past that. That, that We're not holding out to a grudge because at the end of the day, that was business. 
fans are quick to say it's business if it's working for the organization. But when it comes to the players and they try to operate with business, it becomes, oh, no, it's personal. It's an it's a issue. It's a cancer. That was never the case. So with all of that being said, it was never going to be an issue in terms of if L. Bell could return and if he would fit in and the guys would embrace him with open arms. The issue to me was where does he fit right now when you have a healthy James Conner, a healthy McFarlane, a healthy Benny Sna- uh, Benny Snell, and then a healthy Jalen Samuels? Because we know that the Steelers have been using all of those guys at various points. It's not like, oh, this is the go-to guy right here. They're using all of them at different times in the games, some critical moments, some less uh, impactful moments, but they're all being used. So I just didn't think that L. Bell would, would be a necessity for them. And then for L. Bell's side, I said, well, number one, with you having the guaranteed money that you have, you control where you go. You don't have to just say, I, I got to go somewhere, I'm going to get a check, or I have to go somewhere where it's a fit. You really can do what you want right now, whether you're looking for money, are you looking for location, yeah. are you looking for the chance to, to dominate, are you looking for somewhere to chase a ring? Like You have that luxury right now, so that's why I didn't feel that either party necessarily needed each other. But I wouldn't have been surprised if they did link back I up. I think it still would have been a good fit, though, because yeah. if Bell came on the roster, I mm-hmm. think he would have been the best running back on the team right True. away. Now, that's the question. What do you want? Would it would have started off with him getting a 50-50 split in the mm-hmm. backfield? Maybe he only ends up getting 60 right. as the season goes out. But maybe he's good with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, like you said, it all depends on what you want. Maybe he just liked the Steelers culture and right. kind of missed that a little bit. So I think it would have been a good fit. I was definitely down for it because, yeah. like you said, I don't think the drama was really there. I just it think wasn't, a man. lot of that was fabricated. and Which we've seen numerous times from the media. Like, they do that. And that's why a lot of times <laughs> we would say, as players, we don't pay attention to that stuff because we know every week, as and we said this last podcast, as much as fans and media like to say the Steelers don't like drama, they don't want drama, they're constantly trying to throw drama on the team and surround the team in drama. So that's why a lot of times as players, we wouldn't even entertain what the media was trying to push in terms of a narrative because we already know within the locker room how we're going to operate. We already know, even if that was perceived as, oh, me and this guy have our differences. Yeah, for that situation, that's what it was. But now it's totally different. We're not worried about that. We're, we, as athletes, man, you compartmentalize, you move on, and you say, well, what's the common goal? Seventh ring. Absolutely. That the, Whatever the common goal is, that's what we focus on. We don't have time to worry about all the other outside noise. So that's why I never felt there was going to be an issue for Elbel because sharing a locker room with Elbel for four years, I already know the guy. I know the guys in that locker room because it's still a good amount of carryover from when I was on the team. So that was that whole scenario with that. But for L. Bell, the only thing that, the in terms of why I didn't think it was a good fit for him necessarily, from an offense standpoint, yes. But the way the offense is being run now with them using all of their running backs, that's not what L. Bell necessarily thrives in. He He's one of those guys kind of like James Conner. The more he gets to touch the ball, the better he's going to get. Now, obviously, the offense in Pittsburgh is a lot better from a protection standpoint with the offense aligning the receivers. And I mean, the quarterback, I mean, that's a no brainer there, but I just felt like for L bell, you're kind of deciding between, I can go somewhere where they're still a contender like the bills, right? Or even the dolphins. Now the dolphins aren't a contender in that full vein, but he's got the back, but, but in those places, you're going to be able to be the guy in, in Kansas city. I was kind of like, you can go there for the ring chasing element of it. But we saw even with Clyde uh, Edwards. They haven't been using him as much either. That was a cold take by me. Well, after we all of us, all of us. <laughs> and the thing was, it was, but, but I feel like because they have so many weapons and because their offense is predicated on Mahomes, it's a different mentality. Whereas if you go to a place like a Buffalo or or even a Miami, where like right now in in Buffalo, for example, you know Josh Allen, he's doing a great job throwing the ball, but they haven't had the on the 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 sustained running game success. Or even the catching out the backfield element of it. L. Bell in a scenario like that, now you're still on a contender, but you're going to have a prominent role that's not going to vary week to week. Whereas when you're talking about Kansas City and Pittsburgh, that role is going to vary because it's just how the offenses are structured. You don't have to say, I got to get this guy his touches, otherwise we're not going to be successful. You don't have that that same feeling. Whereas in uh, Buffalo right now, they're heavy relying upon Josh Allen playing great. If Josh Allen has an average game, which he did on on Tuesday night, you see the results. You have to play perfect if he isn't out of this world. If he's average on a day, everybody you you can't have the turnovers. You can't you, it, and they don't have the personnel right now with Singletary. He hasn't shown that he can be 
a guy that you can hand the ball off to 20, 25 times, and he's going to just be, hey, he's going to produce, he's going to produce, he's going to produce. We haven't seen that consistency, uh, that consistently yet. So that was a part of the reason why I'm thinking, man, it, it makes happen. sense to see him going to say Buffalo because they're a contender and it's still AFC. He's still going to be in the AFC East. You get to see the Jets again, which you know you want to stick it to. <laughs> Trust me. It, they, I, I was a part. <laughs> it goes through your mind. I, I've had two times. Right? I'm sure. I've had two times where I've had the opportunity to, to, to potentially leave my organization, right? Being in Buffalo four years and being in Pittsburgh four years. And during that midst of when you're about to leave, you go through that thought process of, Man, you know what? I should go in the division because I would love to stick it to this team twice a year. <laughs> but then it just depends on your feelings about the teams in the division in terms of, well, all right, do you want to go over there? Because if ah, they, they got pieces over there, so that's not going to be the best fit. But you thinking about it because if you get the opportunity to stick it to your old team, <laughs> it's no better feeling. It, it, man, when I signed here in Pittsburgh, literally, it was a preseason game in 2014, the preseason game versus the Bills. Man, I had me some hits. I'm out that joint. I'm talking like this was the Super Bowl. Yeah, boy, I told y'all. Y'all want to let me walk? This, that, that, and that. It's just what you do. It's what you do. Because <laughs> you want to prove to them that y'all let a good thing go. So, with L. Bell saying Buffalo, I'm like, I could I could definitely see that because you're going to see Gates for certain this year. For certain, you're going to yeah. see him. And you, and it's no you, you better You got the feeling, better team now. No question. There's no better feeling to show him like, you were using me wrong. It wasn't me. L. Bell showed up. Best shape was like, we saw the pictures. We know what he looks like. He's ready to go. It's not like a year ago or, or the year prior to that when he came off the holdout. It's no, 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 no. This is L. Bell, think 2016, 2017 from a conditioning standpoint. He's good to go. He just needs the opportunity to write situation right now. And the teams that he listed, I, I still don't know. I, well, I know why he said Miami. I feel like from a tax standpoint, being in Florida is very beneficial. The weather <laughs> is nice. But outside of that, throw throw Miami completely off your list. Unless you're looking long term and hoping that that's in a year, thing. what do you want? Yeah, that's the right. Thing. But to me, in this scenario, I don't see him signing some type of multi year deal. I would assume one year deal, that's and then saying, you try yeah. to hit the market again in free agency, Absolutely. which well, I thought it kind of made sense for the Steelers as mm-hmm. well. Um, just because, all right, this be a one year deal. We have all these other guys that mm-hmm. we're trying to sign, so it's just like, all right, we're both going for the yeah. seventh ring. Bell's trying but to show see, out a little bit, but and, and but that's. That's why I say it depends on what he wants. If he's looking for 100%. a ring, ring opportunity, Pittsburgh, Kansas City are great for him. But that's not going to get him paid in terms of productivity oh, right. because he's not going to be the focal point. It's not like 2016, 2017. Whereas if you go Buffalo, you still are in the mix to compete for it, right? You could be a big boost to them offensively in their efforts. But what you are definitely going to do is be able to put up numbers on top of that so you can get paid again. But it really just depends on what's his motives. If he feels like the 28 that's fully guaranteed right now coming from the Jets is enough for him money-wise, and now he just wants the ring chase, well, that's a different conversation. But we don't know his motivation, and there's nothing wrong with it. No, Trust me, I, I know a Hall of Famers that said, man, I went out here to get money. I wasn't going out here to win a Super Bowl. I was trying to get paid. Then I know guys that have never got the big deal, but they were always like, man, I wasn't chasing the money. I was chasing the ring. If I get that ring, I felt like that was enough for me because that's what I cared about more. Everybody is different in terms of how they view that thing, man. So it's no, it's no wrong or wrong, and it's no right or wrong answer in terms of his motives. But that's kind of the thought process with everything, though. You don't think at some point we would have switched the offense a little bit, a little more geared towards him as opposed to like a split backfield? No, no, I think they would. Yeah, I just don't. I, think I, I just don't think that's a guarantee. It's you know not, what I mean? It would have been performance based. He would have had to have shown out for a couple of games for them to really commit to that. Yeah, and when you're looking at just L Bell right now, I don't think the 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 waiting game is going to benefit him, especially if he's taking a one year deal. He needs as many opportunities as possible because it's going to be a, an a, an adjustment period to get. Even if he came back to Pittsburgh and he played in the offense for four years, he spent his past two seasons in New York. You got to unlearn that verbiage and get back to learning to steal it, even though you know it. Even though I could bring up something for that you've done before. In the past couple of years, it's still going to be like, oh, I got to refresh on this. I got to, I got to get this back going. We got some new wrinkles, right? Now. Absolutely, and especially when you're seeing some of the new things that Matt Canada has brought into the offense as well. So that that was another part of it that I was thinking. Just ah, if you're if you're going to go through that phase, you want. I think you if if you're trying to go back out there and prove that you're still the guy, I feel like you want to go where you're going to get the absolute most opportunities. Now Miami might be good in that because you're going to get the garbage time statistics. You're going to put up numbers. <laughs> you know Fitz gonna throw that rock man you're gonna have some opportunities but i just don't like their structure down there i don't i don't feel like it's i feel like they're a one year no. away they got some more people they did a really good job from last year to this year talking about the dolphins and their roster but 
they still I could, I could they see him being time. in similar scenarios that he was in, in with the, the Jets, Jets yes. where Dolphins get down a little early. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're not running the rock as much. Yeah, yeah. you'll get some of the pass catches in, in mm-hmm. the garbage time stats, right. but it's not the same where... Yeah, Bills. I guess Bills are Kansas City. Those are his two yeah. squads. Do you do you want it with the Bills? Like, are I you, first, are you really like feeling this, it? For me, I think Buffalo because it's a fit on both sides. Number one, you still have two really good backs in terms of Devin Singletary and Zach Moss up there. But neither of those guys have proven to be the alpha, the guy that you can just, hey, if it's run or pass, that's my guy. They're good. But now imagine if you include L. Bell into that running back group. Now that group looks like legit legit like really really good compared to what they did last year you had Devlin Singletary and Frank Gore before that you had Shady McCoy and Frank Gore it, it never you never really had the same level of star talent plus depth at the same time when everybody was like good and young and healthy you can get that element then I think of a guy like Josh Allen man right now when you watch him on tape like I said he's throwing some beautiful pass we've highlighted some of that stuff right but he still hasn't had that that legit safety blanket where you know it is covered down field let me drop it off to the back right here and and, and you go make something happen you know El Bell, he does that even with the Jets in this short time he still showed flashes in the passing game even game one before he got hurt he, even with the hurt hammy he still went out there and had some plays in the passing game that is what he brings to that offense if he were to sign there and I think that only opens it up a lot more from a passing standpoint for them and they also got the O-line up there that's going to help him that 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 Bills O-line is way better than we was running behind in the Jets, man. So that's why for me, I think that that's a good fit. Plus, from an organizational standpoint, with McDermott up there, they just have a lot more structure. So that's why I could see him going there. But Kansas City, also, if you're trying to get a ring, that's I mean, in terms of a legit front running, you don't have to worry about can the Bills sustain this. We're right, not right. talking about that conversation with the Chiefs. We expect that from them. We when we talk about the teams that are going to be competing for the rings come you know late in the year december january we know the chiefs are in that mix for certain buffalo they're surprising people and they're showing it but they haven't done it to that level just yet so if you want the sure fire we're going to be in that competition we're going to be in that that conversation then yeah you go to kansas city you just make it work however it happens yeah i feel like bills it could be bell is the difference maker yes there's Mm -hmm. an added element our team Mm -hmm. is just a little better because of he got us over the hump yeah the the x-factor impact whatever whereas with the chiefs hey man i'm gonna do my part i'm along for the ride i'm gonna i'm gonna be levy on bell Mm -hmm. but i don't know what's necessarily gonna happen in terms of my direct impact on how good the chiefs are and what makes me nervous too is because of last year seeing how when the chiefs acquired Lashawn mccoy how they didn't really use him at all for the whole year, he just sat on the They roster. tried at the they beginning. Did, but, but then yeah. but they, they turned away because they said, man, that's not working for us right now. We're going to go what we go with. So you really never got a long sample size for him to even catch up and see if he still had any. Like I said, prior to the trade, or excuse me, prior to him being released in Buffalo, he was very productive. He was their guy. You go from being a, a crazy amount of touches guy a year prior to that and relatively healthy to barely even dressing. He wasn't even dressing for portions of the year. No. That's my fear with L. Bell if he goes to Kansas City because they already have Clyde. And if they try him out on a one or two game basis and it doesn't click how they want, because they're so successful right now, they don't feel the need to wait around for this guy to catch up. And then you'll just be stuck sitting up there. And we know how it goes at the running back position, man. Once you go from not getting the the mega deals to just another guy and then you go from being another guy to not dressing – Brand, brand. Even <laughs> it's though, over for you, man. Because even though at this point, I would definitely take Bell. What's he? Twenty eight right now. Yeah. And we talk about his conditioning mm-hmm. and everything. You, I still and, re- and relatively no wear and tear from the past two. He played. 18, I know. It's eight, well, eighteen games probably on the younger. Roster, like, only played in seventeen of them on his body. Right. Probably younger than that. Uh, as opposed to Lashawn McCoy, which I don't know. He's in his thirties, thirty one, thirty two. He's in that yeah, frame. I, yeah. He might even be older than that. To be honest with you, but like what yeah. I'm saying is. I would take Bell in that scenario mm-hmm. or as a running back over LaShawn McCoy. Yeah. But like you said, if for whatever reason, Chiefs are just kind of, we're doing this, mm-hmm. we're doing that. And you're kind of seeing it with the Bucks. Like all of a sudden now Ronald Jones is getting right. a lot of carries. I think Fournette's been hurt, but, uh, but I don't think, think they Shady's care. Shady's on it's, that roster too. It's just like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, yo, we just want to win. Mm-hmm. And, and we don't have if, to cater to you to win because we already have right. a, a winning it, method. And, we have the guys in place. And it may have nothing mm-hmm. to do with Bell as a player or a mm-hmm. knock on his talent or anything. It just right. might be the fit, like you said, but which, which could hurt him in the market know, the right. upcoming season. Absolutely. 
Absolutely, man. <sighs> wow, dude. That's it's just crazy. Yeah. I, I I guess you could see it coming though. Well, them releasing him. Yeah. I, they were I, trying to trade him. There was mm-hmm. obviously a lot of stuff going on last yeah. year where Gase was saying he didn't even want to sign Bell, well, but the, the general manager was, did. Yeah, they they had a different general manager before they had the head coach. So you bring in the guy and he says, I'm signing L Bell. But then when you bring the coach in, coach doesn't want L Bell. From then on, it's a recipe for disaster. But this is why we keep harping at, in terms of when I say we, not even a lot of the media people because they're 50 50 with this, but a lot of the players. While we harped on the guaranteed money element of it, I know people kept bringing up, well, the Steelers offered him more money, more money, more money. On a per year basis, on a total contract basis, yes, the Steelers offered more money. And they had rolling guarantees, which essentially was if you're on the roster come March of the following year, your money for that year will be guaranteed. In theory, yes, that's cool, but a lot would have to go right for him to continue to make that money. Number one, health. We saw Dak Prescott, how that happened. There's no guarantees with this, okay? He was also, think about Elbow, was on the roster when Ryan Shazier got hurt. So he definitely has seen that. He knows the importance of guaranteed money. Then I said, well, not only do you have to stay healthy, you got to produce. That's number two. But then number three, you got to hope that management and coaching staff stays the same. We talked about how just last year, just last year, once Mike Tomlin went from eight and five to eight and eight, people over here talking about he needs to be fired. You fire him, you bring in a new coach, it could be Adam Gase all over again in terms of that coach, even though he's a he could be a good or bad coach, it doesn't matter, but if that coach doesn't like that player or he wants different personnel, hey, man, your contract is a rolling guarantee. It's not fully guaranteed. We can go in a different direction. Then he's stuck. So for us as players, that's we were so big in terms of harping on L. Bell going and getting the guaranteed money that he got because of this situation right here. You got that $28 million, It don't matter. If gays love you, hate you, it does not matter because that check is coming. Now you're able to just operate and just do you and be the player that you want to be. You don't have to worry about the business element of it. And that's why for this situation right here. So even though we kind of can see the writing on the wall, once gays got there and he made those comments, it never really had an impact on L. Bell because that money was coming. And now he's in the driver's seat once again, where he has the chance to pick and choose where he wants to go. And now we're over here like, man, you know, he kind of looks smart right here. Yeah, it's weird. I think initially, or at some point last year, even I guess early in the season this mm-hmm. year, you would say, ah, oh, man, did Bell make the mistake going right. to the Jets? Just because like, even if the money was a little bit off or a little mm-hmm. bit worse, whatever the guarantees were, like yeah. being in the Steelers situation, mm-hmm. man, that's tough to pass up. Mm-hmm. But like you said now, if, if if his focus was money, which right. you're allowed to, like we're Absolutely. saying, like everyone's got to figure out their mm-hmm. own priorities, what they want in life. If that was his thing, business, then great that's what he went for he got the money with the jets and now like you said he got the guaranteed and he's in the driver's seat he's gonna be able to pick between the bills chiefs and dolphins two of them and and he cut it down to that it could have been who knows how big of this but he went ahead and said i'm narrowing my list of these three teams so when you talk about the driver's seat that's the driver's seat right there man yeah i would have loved for him to stay in pittsburgh but yeah you you just got to do do what's best for you and 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 I understand too when people talk about well if he would have took if he would have played under the franchise tag again that last it year I think it, it would have been, been close it would have been this close this is the issue though remember we said number one you got to stay healthy when he played if he would have played under that second franchise we would have given him the ball a lot we, without a doubt yeah. we gave him four hundred touches the previous two years so he would have done it again and if something goes wrong he gets hurt as much as we talk about the Steelers as an outstanding organization very upfront we know this. Don't act like if L. Bell didn't get hurt and have a major injury at any point, which he had already had injuries prior to. And then if Connor he gets came hurt in. in that franchise year, this do you think the Steelers are going to still offer him that same deal with that same money in terms of guarantees? Not a Especially chance. Especially if you saw what well, we saw with the Angela Williams. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Really good numbers. And then if Connor came in, mm-hmm. like he did when Bell sat out and absolutely. had a Pro Bowl type of year, so, so put as up Pro much Bowl as numbers. people want to say, well, that he was still going to make that or probably make more in these first two to three years, there was no guarantee because if he got hurt, which he already had been hurt and he plays running back, which we say it's only a matter of time before you get hurt at running back. We know this. That, that wouldn't have been the best situation for him. And then also I saw where, man, well, you know, he he had a chance to be in the Hall of Fame, man, if he would have stayed in Pittsburgh his whole career. All I'm saying is this, man. The Hall of Fame, trust me, it's the pinnacle. We love it, right? If you get there, it's one of the highest honors. But at the end of the day, the Hall of Fame ain't going to pay your bills, baby. <laughs> now, I'm just being real with you. I know plenty. Listen, I, 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 you, we're laughing. But I there's know, you're right. You, you, you can Google Hall of Famers that are homeless, that are, are broke, that are needing money right now. That Hall of Fame ain't doing nothing. I mean, it's, it's dope. And they do help out. And it, it's a legacy. I got that. But at the end of the day, 
I like my money. <laughs> I, that's all I'm saying. I, I know guys who are Super Bowl champs that told me, look me dead in the face, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I kind of envy your career. Man. I wish I would have got that money over this ring. I mean, the ring is cool, but shh, I'm living at my house with my mom right now. This ain't that cool right now. I'm like, all right. That's all I'm saying, man. So everybody's motivation is a little bit different. There's Absolutely. no right or wrong with that. But just know you can't just because we might feel like a Super Bowl is more important than a ring doesn't mean that he feels that way or that other people feel that way. But there, I just feel like people don't like to be able to let people operate like that. It's either you are a team guy, you care about the ring or you're a selfish me guy caring about your money and that's bad you can't do that i don't think that's the case when it comes to professional sports though no it's it's a it's a mix of all Mm -hmm. of it like you you want to be the team guy you want to win you also want to be taken care of it's just it's just how how do you weigh all that type of stuff that's all and it as weird as it sounds you're right bell's in the driver's seat he's gonna be picking between two afc contenders here contenders right now man uh, we're both throwing miami out there but we'll see i I guess we'll see i don't know it's cool location (laughs) from a tax standpoint I mean, we know how Florida works when it comes to tax, baby. It's a great situation. So it's things like that that I can see. Like I said, weather-wise, for me personally, I don't think L. Bell in Miami is a good situation. Unless just, somehow he signs a three or four year deal. Like right, right. Said. If they give him that, then cool. But I just don't I don't think it works out if he goes to Miami, honestly. I just it just, it just doesn't sit well with me. Yeah, one year yeah. deal with the Bills or the Chiefs probably makes yeah. the most sense. Yeah, so it would have made sense with the Steelers. I think it would have made sense with the Patriots. You know, too, I also but... thought about San Fran because they've been dealing with injuries True. in the backfield. You know, they like to feature their runners and stuff. Yeah, like there's that. probably like seven or eight yeah. teams that would have made sense. But yeah, even Seattle. Well, I say, man, I could see him in a, a situation in Seattle because the thing is, with him already having the guaranteed money from the Jets, he doesn't have to worry about where he goes. Who can pay X amount of dollars for him? He doesn't have to worry about that. And Bears, Bears right? And yeah, they're absolutely another one, man. So he had numerous options. I was a little surprised at how quick he decided to narrow it down to three, but that's the beauty of it, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that was the hot topic. Absolutely, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Hopefully, Now, hopefully, we'll have this released before should he we, uh, makes uh, a decision. Should I check real quick? Just, just to let everybody know, it's 3.23 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, too, just in case he make a decision beforehand. Let's check. I haven't got any, any notification saying that he made a decision yet. Oh, you have it on notification? Well, no, I just get notifications because i don't have certain time like yeah certain people like you follow or something no no just yeah anytime it's like a major deal sports wise or world news wise i give me a who's who's been on this is it fowler am i right on Uh, that yeah fowler's been the big one he's been the guy Mm -hmm. okay so i'm on his uh channel you can never go wrong with shefty not his channel but his twitter account (laughs) jeez what 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 is going on with you man uh Sean McDermott confirms Bill's interest. This was four hours ago. There's nothing. Yeah, it's yeah. nothing new. There's been nothing. And then if you just type in Le'Veon Bell with the latest, it's just people hoping and wishing. Yeah, yeah, yep. exactly. So nothing yet. So we're yeah. we're good. We're good. I, I will say this though, from a petty standpoint. What? It would be kind of funny. What? My man L Bell, when he goes and signs wherever he decides to signs, if he hits him with you know, I was thinking about coming back to Pittsburgh. I really love Pittsburgh. I love the organization, man. Love Big Ben, my teammates. Like, I, it's a great situation. But the way them fans bashed me on the way out of there, man, I just couldn't deal with it no more. He wouldn't say that. I, I said he wouldn't, but it would be petty <laughs> if he did. I would, I would laugh because he would have a point because we talked about how they tried to throw him in the AB bag. They, they tried it. They tried to bash that man, talk crazy about him all which type of way. I'm like, geez, all because he decided to do this instead of that? Like, Lord. Okay. <laughs> It would be funny. I, I I don't think he will. Hopefully he doesn't because he don't need the extra attention in that regard. <laughs> but I, I it, it would not surprise me. I would I would whether I whether would, I would it would be hilarious. Whether it's true or not, it would be yeah. hilarious though because we know we know we know we. I mean you you put his name in there, man. They 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 bash him. They do. They do. It would be yeah. Funny, I man. honestly I did a little vid on it yesterday. It was like should Bell yeah. come to the Steelers? And there were some people that are saying like, no, he's you know he yeah. he just thinks about himself too much. I don't want the drama back. I'm like, dude, I, I just didn't see it that way at all. It, it, I really didn't. First-hand experience it was not that way. No. Or they hit you with it. Well, he's a weed head. I'm like, Lord, that, that's the new that's what we're going with, too. We're bringing that back up. Lord. <laughs> don't even look into the details of that, but it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> like, golly. Don't, don't be a weed head. Be, be a, a habitual painkiller abuser. That's what they would rather you do. Yeah. Because that's that, the NFL. That, they well, produce, that's, they, they, exactly. Cool, that's cool, a whole cool. different conversation. It's cool. None it's of cool. that makes sense Right, right. It, but, but, you know, let the narratives go, man. This, it's a narrative world we live in, clearly. But yeah. anywho, man. What else? Was there any other hot topics we have right now? Uh, no. That, that's that been the hottest the one. one. Yeah. And outside of, uh, like, just 
Nick Saban, COVID, other than that, like we haven't really seen a lot of other major news. I guess someone with the Falcons got it. They yeah, because they just the shut down their facility for the day. But yeah. all right, either the game goes on this right. week, or they're going to move it yeah. around. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I think that's the big one. I, I can't really like think is, of anything man. else. I like it. Uh, I, I re- yeah. I don't. I was know. hoping you were going to talk about. It. I was going to throw it. I didn't know if you was going to do it or not, man. I was ready though. Oh, I was, dude. I, I yeah. wanted to so bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's that's what I was ready to lead off ASAP. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Anytime I get a chance to talk for my teammates too, I get excited. I'm like, like yes, I said, man, yes. I I had the feeling of like I would I would really like him coming back to Pittsburgh just because our running game's been a little it. spotty. Trust you know? me, if it if it would have happened, I would have loved it because I know what type of player he is, and especially a motivated L Bell. It would have been a cool story. Really Absolutely, cool. man. The return. I was ready to hit you. The hashtag the return is happening. I did. I I, I, posted, I didn't do a hashtag. I just yeah. said the return question mark. See, man, some, I gotta get on the, man. I've been slacking, man. I feel like I, I don't. During the work week, man, it's, I don't have a lot of like social media time until it's like late, late at night. And then by then, who knows if I'm awake or in a good state of mind. It was at a cost to, I think, just me being a, a decent friend, a decent person. Because yeah. I was out at Permanis with uh, mm. my boys and stuff. We're watching, we were watching the Bills game, having a uh-huh. good time eating them. One of them mentions like, oh, Bell, uh, Bell just got released by yeah. the Jets. Dude, I take 10 minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm dialing up, I'm dialing up posts, little Twitters. Let's and- go Chef Deke. That's just not good. I, I I was really questioning who I'm becoming. I'm real like I don't need to be first. I don't yeah. need to get it out there like I'm that. I'm always <laughs> super unplugged. And then everybody, I mean, anybody that needs, knows our comments, they know I go from not saying anything for like two weeks, and then one day I just pop up in there and I'm I'm involved. I want to see what's going on, what's the happenings. But yeah, man, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> to be out to out to eat and just hanging with your friends, then just to go on your phone, just to tweet out, "Is Bell coming back?" <laughs> That's what I've become. I guess it's what I've become. I, I guess I embrace it. I don't embrace know. it, man. Embrace it. Should I? Though? I don't know. You dude. should, man. It's the yin and yang in here, man. It's I the had... mic. It's a microcosm of life, man. Like how you operate one way, you're like, I got. I'm, I'm gonna get dude, this then, first, and but, I'm over here yeah, like, but then, oh, I get to it whenever. Dude, even after yeah. we were done eating like on my w- tw- twitter remorse on my no no on my way home i'm <laughs> checking like and then i get home i'm spending another 30 45 minutes oh, top man. destination for bell do we have a chance i'm spending all this energy getting worked up and then i finally get off the high and i'm laying there i'm like nothing's changed <laughs> literally nothing's changed. i have no control over this but i just spent an hour an yeah. hour and a half worrying about where bell is going but but the consumer <laughs> appreciates it it's people that tune in for that type of stuff. So I I'm guess, sure they man. appreciate you taking that time away from your lunch, away from your or your dinner, away from your friends. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can understand that, man. Yeah, and, and I appreciate them taking your time to distract you away from the Bills game that happened on Tuesday. I appreciate that too, because you know it kind of got you, out. Of, it, it went dude, the wrong direction. For I'm me. not gonna do that because you. Know, I, I, I thought you were. I'm not. I ain't gonna, I I'm thought not. You were. Josh Allen's been playing good. There were some yeah. drops. Well, like the, you the said, interception. Average- the first, definitely the first interception was. Clear drop, hit him in the hands. It happens. Like you said, yeah. average average game. I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. I'm not gonna do it. He's been playing good, man. No. It was a bad game, but this is what I was talking about in terms mm-hmm. of like, let's wait and see. Let's wait and uh-huh. see. So, yeah. but but yeah. in terms of this year, that this game has been an outlier. Mm-hmm. So, and even with this outlier game, it's still like I said, wasn't a bad. It was just average. It, it, I felt like the first four games he's played just crazy good in terms of obviously player of the month and all these other so uh, all these other accolades to go along with the different player of the week stuff like that this game he came back down to earth a little bit dude it, ha- it just yeah. happens i mean even for some of our great runs with the mm-hmm. steelers uh there'd be a game yeah. or two where we would just blow i remember mm-hmm. a monday night game out in san fran it was just terrible yeah. i think we went to the super bowl that year still, i mean but- shoot i know the year we went to the fc championship game man we got what absolutely manhandled by uh was that was the year we got manhandled by miami Oh, was yeah, the before, yeah. yeah, but say so, yeah, Miami torched us. Philly torched us one time early in the season oh, before yeah. we went on a run. Once, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, and we all obviously know the Cowboys game, how that played out with with Zeke doing with that Zeke one hurts. Hurt. Yeah, that, that hurt, one that hurts. hurt too. That was a nice comeback. Yeah. The fake spike and everything. Yep. That one hurts. That it hurt me twice because growing up, my folks, man, we were diehard Cowboys fans. I'm talking like everybody got a star in their car, cowboy blankets. Like even when I got to the NFL, my mom, my own mom, I came out of her. Bill sticker, cowboy sticker on her car. She won't play no games. Yeah. My uncle, man, he pop up. He, he, I brought him to the Bills Cowboys game. He's like, I got my Bills, your Bills jersey on with a Cowboys undershirt. Like, 
yeah, that, that's just the vibe. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it. so for me, when we lost that game, I said, "Oh God, not no, not." I feel it twice now because like I needed that win. You know what I mean? Like for 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 you us. still hear about that though? Oh, what? Come on, man! I talk to my cousin all the time, man. Love my cousin Tiffany, man. Big time Cowboys fan. Like I said, because on Sundays we would all meet up at her house, her dad's house, and we're all in there ten, twenty deep. We watch Cowboys. Like that's just it. That's what we do. So. Obviously, you know, we playing that game. They hit me up. We're like, yeah, how you feeling? And to this day, man, <laughs> constantly, hey, psh, you know, them Cowboys are still as food. Remember having last time y'all went out there? Like, yeah. Oh, we got another one this year, though. I, I know. I, t- trust. You think they're going to let me not know? Yeah. <laughs> you heard what happened last time. I'm like, oh, all right. This could be different, though, baby. They got Dalton now, though. <laughs> Little AFC North connection there again. <laughs> Makes me even more excited. <laughs> Uh, you got anything else with that game at all you want to talk about? Or, um, are, we, are we ready to get into the Steelers Browns here? Um, in terms of that Bills game, yeah. Um, I think for me the biggest thing was it just looked like a team that if they aren't operating at a high level, if they turn the ball up like they did, that's going to happen. But they also have a ton of injuries right now, man. Obviously, Tre'Davious White didn't play in the game. Matt Milano. Um, you go down the list of guys on offense and defense. It, it was it was a very very injured situation going out there. Very. Similar to what the Eagles do, right? So you see Carson Wentz, you assume that the Eagles are a healthy team because the quarterback is there. That's not a bad there. comparison. But then when you look at the Eagles, you're like, dang, y'all missing this receiver. John Brown was in it. He's your, what, leading receiver from a year ago. They're number two guy this year. He's out. Oh, you look on defense. That guy's out. That guy's out. That guy's out. But because the face of the, the team is there, the perception is they're healthy. That's how it is right now with Buffalo, man. They've been like that for the past probably two, two and a half weeks, realistically, man. Just different guys in and out. Haven't got fully back healthy, but when they do, they'll be fine. That was an interesting game for me. Bills, yeah. Titans, two. I know. I, I was <laughs> two teams I I've ripped on in the past. <laughs> I was like, man, who is Deke cheering for right now? Does he nah, want Tannehill to look great? No, nah, I see. Like yeah. I said, I don't put too much stock into yeah. any of that stuff if it's if it's outside the Steelers. Mm-hmm. I was just sitting back and watching yeah. and observing. That's all. Well, for me, I said, man, that's and a Titans game. That's how the Titans play. But they, we'll I, I was surprised though. The Titans didn't have the type of success I thought they would in terms of Derrick Henry's impact. In terms of Tannehill from a passing standpoint, when you look at their numbers, they weren't, I mean, either of those guys, I think Derrick Henry ended with like 50 yards, probably had his lowest amount of touches in a game this season. He did. He had 16 touches from a running standpoint. Usually he was 25 to 30 per game. So there were times where the Bills were doing good as a whole, but the turnovers kill you, man. You can't have the turnovers like that, especially if you're not playing at a crazy level in terms of productivity, throwing the ball and stuff like that. You just can't have those type of mistakes. Gotcha. Yep. All right, we ready. But can we can we do? Can, I'm ready for this this preview, man. We come up here on Thursdays, man. You know what Thursdays are on the podcast, baby. We preview, man. We got these people waiting 50, 1100 minutes and stuff, man. Come how, on, wait, how long? How long was that? I know. Well, I don't know. I can't see. Like 37, 37, like 37 Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven minutes. It's like that sometimes. We just want to. Bell, Bell's a hot topic. Though. But but this is good radio too. You know what they say? If you come out and just give them what they want at the beginning. They ain't gonna stay tuned. <laughs> if we wait to the end of it, now you gotta listen through a little bit, or at least skip through to find out where we at. So now we here, <laughs> and I'm excited about this matchup, man. Um, thinking about just uh the rivalry in itself, the history of the Browns and Steelers. This is, I mean, one of the premier in terms of just rivalries, in terms of just knowing. You talking about a long game. You talking about both sides having times where they've had success in the NFL, premier success. To me, that's what I feel like makes this so intriguing because we got both of them right now. It's been at, 20 at, years. Yeah, where, where they're both good in terms of Browns being 4-1, and Steelers 4-0. and um, You have plenty of storylines as well. When you think about, obviously, you got the low-hanging fruit in terms of Miles Garrett and that whole situation. Obviously, Pouncey being back out there, potentially depending on his availability. But just across the board, man, Baker in a contract here. Is he for real? Is Stefanski finally the guy in Cleveland? For the the Steelers, man, this is going to be their legit biggest test of the season. Who are they? Are they legit? Are they kind of good? Are they great? Are they bad? We're going to get all those questions answered, or at least a good amount of them answered. And I just love it. And then you're going to have fans again. Like it, it's, it's a great storyline altogether, man. I got, I got another one to add to that. Uh-oh, what you got? Dude, don't forget last year, Steven Nelson. I don't get the hype with these receivers. Mm, okay, Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. right now, the yeah. our CBs aren't playing that hot. So, well, the biggest thing is, and we talked about this too. If they can clean up technique, uh, if they can clean up from a technique standpoint, man, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be fun, though, man. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk about this one. I don't know where you want to start off in terms of. 
Browns offense versus man, our Dillard's defense. Man, Dillard's choice, man. You got it, man. You cooked today. What you want? Uh, yeah, let's do that. Browns offense versus our yeah. defense. I'll I'll defer to you there. We'll start with the defense. <laughs> All right, all right. I like it, man. So for me, when I think of this matchup, a couple of things stand out. Um, number one, you got to stop the run. The Browns, their offense is predicated on running the ball. They run the ball to get to play action. Now, they do a great job of both in terms of running the ball. I think they're leading the league. They have over 900 rushing yards on the season. They're either right they, up there. I don't know the what you're tier. looking at, but they on the NFL.com, mm-hmm. they have yeah. those little... Uh, bar grass, yeah, whatever. depending on they, which category. Are you looking for they a got total at, yard? They got them at first. Rushing per attempt. They yeah. got them at first. But yeah. they, they're they top notch in that department. And then when it comes to play action pass, um, they it's I want to say they have the most play action pass. No, no. They're second behind. No, no. They're third behind Buffalo and Tennessee in terms of play action pass yardage. So they excel in running the ball, which they do a great job of. The three-headed monster. Well, now it's two-headed because Chubb is injured. But they do a great job running the ball. And then the play action pass Outside of that, it's the trickeration in terms of the double pass that we've been seeing, the reverse pass that we've seen between Odell and Jarvis. They have it, it, it reminds me what was the guy? It was it's not Arians, it might have been Wizard Hunt, I want to say, where you knew it was gonna be some type oh, of with Randall wrinkle. Well. Right, right. You knew it was gonna be some type of wrinkle. That's what we're seeing with Stefanski right now in that Browns offense. Throughout these first couple of games, they've hit on one of those plays each time. And to me, that's a difference in terms of what stands out to them in terms of their offense. Because from a pure passing standpoint, Baker has been very inconsistent. I know his numbers, when you look at them, he isn't turning the ball over as much and he hasn't he hasn't had the gaudy numbers, but they haven't been terrible. But when you watch him on tape, he still isn't seeing the field well. Um, in the pocket, he's still hitting guys in the face with the ball. Not the, not the good guys. You know what I mean? Like, you're seeing that from him, and and I just feel like it just looks as if he's playing too fast for himself right now, but he's still contained enough because the running game has been so good, and they've been able to get he's not some guys it over like play he was last pass. year. Right. The running game has really taken a lot of pressure off of him as a passer, but when we talk about our defense against him, our defense, as it pertains to the run game? Yeah, we should be good. They're one of the best in the league. Yeah. And, and not having to blitz here, that's the thing that's, that's special. When you can stuff the run without having to run blitz, that's going to be key because that's going to ultimately force them to become one-dimensional or have to get out of these bigger personnel. They play a lot of 12 personnel. They use 21. They legit use their fullback a lot. Like he even gets touches. It's crazy on third downs. And he's he's pretty efficient in terms of getting they, moving the chains, They man. definitely have an old-school offense. It's, it's like nuts, an man. 2002 offense. Yes, yes. And, and they're, they're giving fullback counters, fullback dives. I've seen them hit you with some speed option, a little bit of zone read. Like they're doing some funky stuff in terms of their offense. But it's, it's all predicated because of the run game. So if you're the Steelers on defense and you know Vince Williams, Devin Bush, we know – Especially Vince, you are a tackle for loss machine this season. Tyson Alawalu, Cam Hayward, Stefan Tuitt, they've been dominant on the interior in terms of run, in terms of run support. And let's, let's be real about it. What team have we seen have sustained running success? None. Miles Sanders last week had the explosive run, Outside the 74 that, yards. Nothing. But we haven't seen a team be able to sustain drives running the ball. And I think that's going to be the biggest difference in this game. Because once you make the Browns one-dimensional and Baker has to sit back and throw it, well, even though he has Odell and Jarvis, who are going to be a handful, a legit handful, they are, they're playing like that this year. They're going to be a handful. I don't think Baker can play mistake-free that long. As long as he's not turning the ball over, they're fine. But he's not going to be able to sit back and throw the ball to, to to make them win, if we make them one dimension like that, he can't throw it consistently and accurately enough. And his decision making isn't good enough to keep them out of bad situations. And that's why, for me, I like the Steelers defense a lot more in this particular matchup. Yeah, 100 percent. I think that's the potential cause for concern. Their receivers versus our cornerbacks. But I think you put it perfectly. If we just say, hey, let's make Baker beat us, mm-hmm. then I like our chances because. If you go to Wentz, even like Deshaun Watson, those type of quarterbacks, our main thing was like, all right, don't let's let's see what these guys could do. We got to stop the run, whatever. Let's see if they could beat us like that. I think they can throw the ball down the field and mm-hmm. make those type of plays. Whereas Baker, he just doesn't have right. that. Like Carson Wentz 
is able to. If you're saying Even Deshaun Watson, like, if you're saying, hey, we're gonna field, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna stop the run here, we're gonna just pressure the quarterback. Let's mm-hmm. see if you can beat us just kind of single handedly. Yeah. Deshaun Watson and Carson Wentz, they have that. They do. They have that Definitely. ability. We were able to contain it for the mm-hmm. most part. There were some leaky plays there yep. though, where you're definitely cause for concern i just don't see that with baker so Mm -hmm. i think that's the strategy make baker beat you they have the receivers but if we could get him like throwing the ball a lot and making volume type of passes then i like our chances i i just don't think he's gonna be completely mistake free in this game if we go with that strategy but i will say this this will be the best offensive line the Steelers have faced to date this old line here, man, the Browns have done a great job oh, yeah, between free agency and the draft. Yep. Their old line is is legit. It's good. Now, of course, they still will give up pressure. Nobody is perfect. You Even the Cowboys, when people were hyping up their old line, they still gave up sacks and pressure. It happens. So don't take that and think, oh, well, I saw uh, 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 Jedrick Will, uh, Wills give up a sack last week. Oh, they're not good. Trust me, as a group, they are really good. This is not that Browns O-line from last year. It's not the Browns O-line from the past two or three years. So I do want to see when it's good on good, like this is going to be, all right, are we as legit up front as we think we are? Because we know from a passing game standpoint, we've seen that now for multiple years. We know what we are there. But from a running game standpoint, we haven't faced a unit like this. We would have had that versus the Titans, but we haven't yet. So that's going to be a big test. And I'm excited to see it because – I feel like that as a defense right now, that's one of our strengths in terms of as a whole group, our front seven has been playing a lot better, has been more productive than our back end. I mean, that's not a shot at anything. It is just facts right now. So for me, that's why when I'm looking at that, I'm like, that's what it's going to be. It's a simple thing in terms of can our unit beat their unit in that regard, but it is not going to be easy at all. And that's the only thing that can make me be a little bit concerned because if they're able to to sustain the run and ultimately keep that play action available, that scares me a lot. Yeah. yeah. Now, this doesn't have anything to do with X's and O's, but mm-hmm. maybe with the talk of, and you know, I'm questioning our secondary, questioning our quarterbacks, just maybe, maybe even in general with this game and Steelers versus Browns and the hype coming towards it, I feel like we're going to step up. I just <clears> have that <throat> feeling like, cornerbacks are gonna ball out you mm-hmm. got the beckham landry thing and oh man these receivers kind of could it be a miss- step up? huh you don't think odell type to step up i think they will but it goes Yo. back to baker it goes back okay to baker. i was like low it, bro. It, I, I hope you don't think that baby it goes back to baker though but i just think i think we're gonna be up for the occasion here i just think we will for me man i think the biggest difference is gonna be when you talk about our offense against their defense that's gonna be the decided factor i'm Baker has had turnovers throughout the season. Obviously, this Colts game, man, he, he turned the ball over a little bit there. I just think that what we're going to be able to do from an offensive standpoint is going to be more than what the Browns' offense is going to be able to do against our defense. I do think the Browns are going to be able to have success, though, on our defense, man. I, you think? I, I do. I do, Really? Man. What? What is it then? Is it you think they're gonna get some of the running game, I or you think gonna, Baker's gonna be able to pass? No, Baker's gonna be able to make some throws. You think? Okay. And, and you talk about combat catching. We we talked about Flugum, uh, Flu Cam, Flugum, however you want to say his name, <laughs> and Ward making combat catches last week. Right, some of the good throwing catches. Odell and Jarvis this season have been making all type of crazy combat catches. I mean, you look at that last game against the Colts; they were making all type of just one hand. This guy's on them like that's there. So even if you're in the right place, they're still going to take chances and they're still going to be tough to finish on these players. But I'm still concerned because we still haven't seen our secondary have a clean game in terms of no it. mental errors, it. no bus. A bus against Odell is an 80 yard touchdown. We don't need that. <laughs> That's what makes me a little bit concerned. That's why I say I do think they will be able to have success because we haven't seen our defense as a whole be mistake free. And that's not going to just happen overnight. Will it Will it decrease? Yes. But in terms of just, oh, you go from having five plus mental errors a week ago to now you're going to have zero. I played for nine years. I never saw that happen. That's all I'm saying, man. Like I said, it had, it has nothing to do with the X and O's because yeah. everything you're saying is right. Just mm-hmm. the feeling. Just the feeling mm-hmm. that, all right, Odell, Jarvis, people mm-hmm. ripping on us a little bit. We're going to ball out here. Show these guys uh, we're back to our uh, 2019 form. That's all. That's all what right. I'm thinking. Back to tw- oh oh from a D I was like twenty nineteen. No, I'm, I'm thinking oh. I'm thinking yeah, cornerbacks yeah, 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 in secondary. Court. Okay, yeah, got yeah. you, got you. That's yep. what I'm thinking. I like it. All right, because <laughs> <sighs> you're right. I, I mean, everything that we've seen thus far that is a concern. But like I said, 
with I'm just not that big on yeah. Baker, man. I think if, if thinking Baker is the X factor right now for them, man. Right. Which Baker is gonna show up? Is he gonna be playing well, mistake free? Because a, a playing well, mistake free Baker with the weapons they have. I think he's gonna throw over forty times. That's what I'm thinking. <sighs> they don't want that. Well, we, we, we're gonna if stop we the smash run. the run yeah. like that, then yes. But I just I don't know. It's gonna be different, man. So you think? So part of me thinks that you're kind of saying they might be able to get something on the run a little bit, like no, complimentary football. They they will. I, I think right. they will. They've done that. They trust me, man. When I tell you this old line is good and they got guys who are running the ball, man. Listen, when you lose Nick Chubb, that which is a big loss normally. We knew Kareem Hunt is still coming to ball out, but Dearness Johnson, you've no one even heard of this guy until this year, and literally he came in in what the second quarter of the Cowboys game. And was on fire. And he's still producing like that, man. Like, when you're seeing them being able to just put anybody back there sometimes and still have success, that lets you know that they're controlling the line of scrimmage. They are winning up front. And now, on the flip side, the Steelers defense has been winning yeah. up front. So it's going to be good on good in that regard. I just don't think that when it's good on good, you're going to just completely wipe them out, though, to make them one-dimensional. That's fair. my only thought process completely, with that. Completely fair. And I agree with yeah. you. Those were some of the notes that I wrote down. Like. Yeah. Dude, it seems like everything the Browns have been doing from an offensive line standpoint mm -hmm. and just running the ball, that's been good. But then yeah. also we've been able to stop the run and just our defensive line, our front seven in general. Absolutely. That's been good. So like it's gonna be that's the we talk about a five star matchup. Yeah. That right there, that's gonna be the clash. And man. you said Baker's the X factor because yeah. I'd give them the upper hand on their receivers versus our cornerbacks and mm -hmm. our secondary right now. But is Baker that type of quarterback that's going to be able to take advantage right. of it? I'm I'm betting against it. That's that's yeah. kind of my thought process. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. But you still think he's going to? It, well, it'll be good enough. Well, because though, this is the thing, man. To make we, it a game, right? Because we saw Jeff Driscoll, for example, right, come in have some success. Jeff Driscoll isn't Baker Mayfield. Even though we don't think Baker's in the category of Carson Wentz and, and uh, Deshaun Watson, he's still a step above that. And oh, Driscoll, right. when Driscoll really started to see, okay, who I'm throwing it to and getting a little comfortable out there, he was able to move the ball. That's my thing. I'm like, I feel like with Baker, I'm like, Baker can throw good enough to beat you. He can. He just, the mistakes, his decision making is bad. And that's why, that's why I think is the tipping point. I think they'll be able to have success. I just think, man, the tipping point is going to be when you see him out here and he has one of those back-breaking turnovers. That's going to be the difference in it where you're like, whew, man, he was moving the ball. They did some good things, but the turnovers killed him. I know our defense is very opportunistic in that department. You're not going to just have passes just floating around there or tips and things like that, which he does have a ton of tip passes as well. You're not going to get away with that against this defense. And that's why I think is the biggest difference in terms of why I don't think they'll be able to, to ultimately do enough on the offense end. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. All right, so what Steelers offense versus their defense? Absolutely. I know you want to go first, man. Good. Give me the big thing. Give me. Give uh, me. Come on. I don't. Know. I just think so. Their main thing is Miles Garrett potentially getting to the quarterback, mm -hmm. disrupting stuff like that. Which they, they do have a really good front, though. So they here's do. the thing: they have a good rush defense as well, kind of like us. Mm -hmm. um, our running game hasn't been that hot. It's been just kind of average. So I'm not expecting anything crazy from that. It might just be tough yards that are gained throughout the game, yeah. three, four yards, keeping the defense honest. So you know who it's coming down to then. Mm -hmm. It's coming down to Ben, man. Mm -hmm. He's just going to have to keep balling out and doing the things that he's doing. Uh, like I said, Miles Garrett, we're just going to have to keep him in check. We get the ball out quick. I think we definitely have the big advantage on receivers versus their cornerbacks mm -hmm. and their secondary. They've been giving up uh, a decent amount yeah. there. It hasn't been too hot at all. So that's it, man. I, I just think Ben's going to have to ball out how he's been balling out, controlling the offense, just making mm -hmm. checks. Whatever the hell he's doing, he's been doing great, yeah. and he just keeps that going. I think going back to even whenever we were talking about the defense, good on good, whatever, I think both teams are really good. But if we're both firing on all cylinders, right. we should have the upper hand and we should win the game. I just think no. we're more talented, a little more explosive all around. We, You know what I mean? Just on defense and offense, all the pieces together versus mm -hmm. all their pieces, we should have the upper hand. And if Ben just keeps doing what he's doing, that's that's kind of how I feel. I like it. I like it. Man, when I look at the, the Browns on defense – it starts up front for them. They, I mean, in terms of their rushers, we haven't seen a guy like Miles Garrett. J.J. Watt at this stage of his career isn't Miles Garrett. I mean, J.J. is still a good player, but he's not Miles Garrett. And no disrespect to T.J. Watt, but Miles Garrett, we talked about, is one of the elite 
edge defenders. You can debate if he's the number one guy. Like he's in that conversation. Like him, love him, hate him. He's in there. Like that's that's for certain. But then you look at Olivier Vernon, man. Now that he's healthy, he's been productive as well in the rush. So you know, on the edge, you're going to be tested. Obviously, Chooks and Al. Luckily, with Al, you have familiarity uh, familiarity with Miles Garrett. But we know how Miles has been of recently in this series so that is something to keep an eye on and then obviously on the interior larry ogan joby is a guy very underrated man but produce he produces consistently in the run and pass game so that's something to me that i still i want to see how our old line responds to that philly last week was good but i still think they didn't have one of those just bona fide this is just, next level not next level but next level in the sense of Okay, last week you faced a, a Philly team that was deep in terms of you had a wave of guys that were really good, but even Fletcher Cox right now isn't in the Miles Garrett category. Now you're going to get a chance to see how you guys respond to a, a good group that's this deep up front, but you have a star now. You have a, a, a big time guy to deal with. How do you respond to that? That's what I'm interested to see from our old line. Like you said, from the secondary standpoint, man, that defense is... They've been banged up. Their linebackers aren't really good at all. In the secondary, Denzel Ward, he's their guy. Wherever yeah, he's yeah. at, man, he's been he's been playing shutdown this year. He's been really good. It's gonna be interesting to see how they use him. I know initially I was thinking, well, maybe you go Claypool because Claypool was hot last week, but I think he matches up better with either Juju or Deontay just because of his size and what they're able to do as well. Match up as in if Claypool's on him, Claypool. Well, because Claypool's so much taller than him. Yeah, he's just, Claypool's a big just freak right now you know what i mean so in that regard i that don't know how to match up. yeah def, it definitely does so that's going to be interesting to see like how they utilize him in that regard but with their defense they it's weird they lead the league in turnovers they have 12 turnovers this yeah. year but this the thing no kind of no. fluky i mean nah, nah, what was fluky. it like they, four they against haskins and then but, two but they against produce Rivers. they produce they, no no it's fine yeah, it's, it's, it's not it's fluky good about but 12 don't, no. don't stay it's fluky it's not fluky my point is we got ben not okay. turning the ball over like that's the opposite of what we're doing I, right now and we're gonna that. we're gonna keep this going listen i'm with you <laughs> on that all i'm simply saying is this some of the throws that we've seen Ben make and we said, oh man, well that was a bad throw, but luckily it was a drop or luckily it fell harmlessly to the ground. They're opportunistic in terms of they aren't allowing that. Rivers had two where he thought it was going to be like that and one was a pick six. Like that to me, that that's the only way I can see our, their secondary really having a negative impact on us offensively. As long as Ben continues to stay clean, he'll be fine. If he has a couple of bad throws in there, that could change the game. We do know that for certain because they might not be the best at stopping teams and they've allowed a good amount of points and a good amount of yards. But what they do do great right now is create turnovers. They do do that. You don't get 12 by mistake. You don't do that by accident. That doesn't, you don't just walk into that and, oh, I asked, oh, it was a flu. I caught 12. Cool. <laughs> no, that's not how that works, man. It's not. And I understand from a competition standpoint, we'll bring up, well, they played against Haskins. They played against Burrow. Phillip Rivers gave him some stuff. They played I, I don't, against Dak. I don't care about them yeah. winning or losing those games. I think mm -hmm. I'm just talking about the turnovers where I, I don't know if that's going to be mm -hmm. as much of a concern for us because I don't yeah. think we're playing that type of football right now. Like I said, just continue on. But this, all I'm saying is when you say we're not playing that type of football right now, I just know plays that I've shown you as well where it was like, yo, this could have been a pick. Or if this the DB only one is I'm better. The I'm thinking is the Broncos, though. I'll be honest with you. That's the only we'll, one we'll, I'm thinking of. I'll show you later. All right. We're good. I'll show you later. For a fact, though. <laughs> I <laughs> but it's all good. <laughs> do I, I don't know if I'm going to want to see it, be honest You're probably with you. not. I'm, I'm probably just You're probably gonna, not. I'm probably just going to go blind at yeah. that point. We, we talked about it. I mean, you said Broncos. We, we, we talked about the different games where, okay, he's featuring this receiver, so he's trying to get him some touches early in the game, and it's like, whoo, that could have been a pick six right there. Against the Browns, those have been picks. They, they has, it wasn't a, oh, it could have been or oh, it probably should have been. It's like, no, they're capitalizing on those opportunities. So that's my only thing with that right now. I apologize. Man. I just don't yeah. see it. I, I haven't seen it. I've only seen the Broncos mm -hmm. drop. That's kind of it. Yeah. Everything else I thought have been good messes. Mm -hmm. So I, I just think Ben's playing pretty good, man. He's going to keep it going. That's okay. all. I wouldn't expect anything less from you. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Even you saying that, I had to get defensive, huh? I, you did, too. You definitely did. It's cool, man. I know that's your that's your guy, man. That, He's playing good, dude. You got your seven tattoo covered up. I wish you, bro. You know what? Shout out to some people that I'm seeing out there. You know what? I got to I gotta tip my cap. I think Rich Eisen's throwing some tweets out there. What? Get, get Ben in the MVP conversation. What? Okay, okay, okay. So they all talk about... 
But you said you don't want that, right? So, no, nah, we ain't tipping our Captain Rich Eisen. You said, if you ain't talk about us beforehand, don't talk about us now, right? So, we don't want that. Don't don't tip your Captain Rich. He was Rich. subtle. He was subtle about so, it. It was, so it was a subtle, late, just right? like, all right, Steeler fans, we understand. Yeah. You said too late, though. You huh? said the bandwagon is closed at 3-0. and <laughs> So, it's too late for him. He should have sent that tweet out two weeks ago. So, we can't congratulate him for that. That's what you told he, me. He wasn't going over the top. He was just, like, mentioning it. Still, I was just, like I said, nah, just nah, tip of the cap. Nah, thanks nah, thanks for throwing that out there. You were supposed to say, keep that same energy. I don't want you, little, I don't want you throwing it out there. Here's the problem. I haven't seen what Rich Eisen's been saying at any point up until that tweet. So, I don't know what his vibe has been. If his vibe was in week one or two where... Mm-hmm. Maybe he was questioning Ben a little bit or even before the season. Then, yeah, maybe maybe I would be a little more outraged. But I've only seen that tweet, so Jeez. that's a benefit to him. <laughs> I like it, man. <laughs> but then um, another thing that should definitely be alerted or could potentially be happening, too, um, they gave up a, a kickoff return for a touchdown last week, man. No one talks special teams. We, we understand the Browns that. Did. Absolutely, they did. The Colts, man, they ran one back. I didn't, even, I didn't watch the game. I'll yeah. be straight up with you. I was looking it's up. It's all good. I was, I was looking up old stuff, actually. I was yeah. looking up old highlights and just kind of stats. I wasn't. Yeah. I didn't want to lock in on the Colts game for whatever reason for that's this cool. research. That's I don't know what that's it is. Fine, man. Everybody operates differently. Baby. I know. I, I just yeah. wasn't feeling it for this one. I, I was looking up, no. just like I said, the old games and the old Everybody stats. operates differently, man. Like, trust me, man. I know guys who only watch their most recent game i know guys who watch a variation of three games i know some people that only look at certain or i'm only going to look at first downs from this game i'm only looking at red zone from this game like everybody operates differently in that regard but to me man seeing them give up the touchdown now i don't know the numbers in terms of how often it is if a team gives up a kickoff return do they do it again the following week but i do know that they got gashed for a big one and we know how Ray Ray McLeod has been playing in terms of the return game. We've seen how he's really breathed life into the kickoff return unit. He's already had some runs where he was on the on the brink of breaking it. That's something that we should also be looking at as well because that could be a... I mean, ultimately, that was the reason why the Colts got back in that game last week against the Browns. The Browns were up two scores at the time. And literally, they run back a kickoff, change the whole outlook of a game. Then you have a turnover. And now you're in here like, whoa, baby, can they finish this or not? So that's something that I think we should definitely be aware of because Ray Ray McLeod and that kickoff return unit, shout out to Danny Smith for that. Those guys have been playing really well this season, man. Is that your X Factor? <laughs> He's not my X Factor, but it's something to keep an eye on. Like, don't be surprised if you see success in the return game. I like that. Don't just, be just, surprised. Just, just drop something. Just don't be surprised. That's all. <laughs> Uh, how do you feel about our run game? I don't. I'm like I said. I think yeah. it's going to be a tough running game for us. I, I, I do be. as well. Um, like I said, they do a good job with their front four, but I'm excited because there are some times, like I said, with their linebackers. Man, they well, they went through a mass overhaul. Like they improved yeah, yeah. their roster, but their linebackers, both of I mean, both of the starters from last year, they ended up leaving through free agency, obviously. So you have younger players, you have guys that aren't necessarily as proven or as polished just yet in this stage of their career being out there and it's showing on tape. So I can't see a scenario where any of our right backs, whether it's James, Benny, McFarland, Samuel, if they can get those guys out there in space and kind of highlight that element of it or highlight the one-on-ones in the hole. pass catching that. Well, that element, but just any time where you're isolating these guys, whether it's, you think about some of the, uh, the toss plays we'll see, right, where they are trying to just get the running back the ball early isolate him one-on-one with the back where there's in the hole or on the on the perimeter of the line stuff like that i think bodes well for the Steelers in terms of them finding ways to supplement their run game if they can't get it going like how we saw last week we i mean last week they didn't have a sustained running game no but they did just enough and did certain things to just keep that eagles defense honest and ultimately they hit the splash plays. i think that's going to be a big thing the splash i don't think they can stop the splash plays that the offense will be able to create should I stick with my X Factor from last week, Ebron? Should I not give up on him then? If you're talking linebackers, could it be again? I like it, but let's be real. Isn't what wasn't that the knock on Ebron coming in? He he can get open. He's a great route runner, but ball security, whether it's yeah, it drops or fumbles. Yeah. So to me, throughout these first couple of games, even though we've seen him do a little bit of both, that doesn't change my opinion on him. He's still a good player. He's a great athlete. But you just know ball security is going to be an issue with him. So you go there, but don't, I mean, it's more so proceed with caution. Like, don't, don't get mad because, oh man, dude, why is he fumbling the ball? It's like, you knew this coming in throughout his career. This, this is a part of this. We, we all, everybody has something bad about them. We all got something. You no, know? like it might, somebody might love it, but it's still a negative about you. 
that's just his negative right now, man. That and, and when it comes to run blocking, but that's a whole other conversation, man. Yeah. I'm feeling good about our offense versus our defense, yeah. for sure. Like I said, it just might not be the running game this time. But like you said, if we're able to do the isolation stuff, maybe we could break one here mm-hmm. or there, have a little splash play. But I really think it's just going to yeah. come down to Ben dominating and doing mm-hmm. his thing. And then you got to protect the ball. Our protect receivers, ball, good, man. hopefully Deontay's healthy. They said he's, I think, yeah, we talked about yeah, this. Yeah. I think they said he practiced, yeah, he practiced today. today. Yeah. So if we got we got those four receivers again, mm-hmm. Claypool's on a hot streak, I'm feeling good. Yeah, I'm absolutely, definitely man. feeling good. We, you still got, sticking with 27 13? I have though, to, huh? dude. I have to. Golly. You think it's going to be closer? Week? <laughs> what? Absolutely. Listen. Dude, we saw Philly was closer. <laughs> and this team is way better than Philly. 27 13. Book it. Book it. <laughs> All right. I like it, man. Yeah, at least you're consistent, man. For me. We keep winning. For me, I'll probably go. Either 31 27 or 31 24. Shootout. I guess that's, is that a shootout? I th- I, when, when I think shoot, I think of like Pac 12 50 to 48. Like that, that's the type of stuff I think of. Low man. key, low key shootout. Yeah, I think Many shootout. Yeah, you're going to get some offense in there. We're going to see some some productivity, but it's going to be a it's going to be a really good game. I think it's going to be a, a lot uh, tougher and more hard fought game than we've seen from the Steelers this year. And, and I will say this I do think. If everything is even, right, in terms of neither side turns the ball over, it's going to be one of them games where you're like, Ooh, we getting down, to, getting down to the, to the nitty gritties right here. I, I, I love these type of games personally, man. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to be one of them back and forth, super close, who's going to make the play because I like to lean on the side of the Steelers because when you're in a rivalry where you've dominated in terms of having the amount of wins that they've had, especially under Ben, you just always in the back of your mind, you have that feeling of, Man, I don't care what the score is. We're going to find a way to win. We're yeah, going to win. Yeah. And then when you're on the other end of that, because I've experienced both sides where I have was in Pittsburgh where you've dominated the series against the Browns, but then I've been on the other end in Buffalo where we were dominated by the Patriots. When you're on the other end of that thing, man, even if you're having success in the game, you're always looking over your shoulder. You always feel like, is he going to catch me? Is it, What's going to happen next? Are we going to mess up? Are they going to do something crazy? In the first sign of adversity in those tight games, you're dropping your head. I just think that that's going to be the difference in this matchup. I just feel like when it gets down to it and it's tight and people are, man, oh, can't make a mistake. I feel like the Steelers play to win in that regard, whereas the Browns, I think they're going to be playing not to lose or not to make a mistake. Dude, actually, that's a perfect point. I completely forgot about this, but uh, someone on ESPN was saying that Baker's like QBR, his stats in the fourth quarter mm-hmm. or like late in games has been like, god awful this year yeah well they haven't really used him as much in the fourth quarter either in terms of i think he has only 18 passing attempts in the fourth quarter so people were asking in terms but that of, goes back to like the playing not to lose i'm just i'm yeah. thinking specifically of that cowboys game well i was gonna say that cowboys game but i feel like the cowboys game is still an outlier because they were up so big in the fourth they it was still 41 14 at one point in the fourth and then obviously they went on a crazy run and then from there that changes it but when you're up big like that Imagine if we're up three scores in the fourth. Would you want Ben out there throwing the ball every time? Are you going to try to run the ball to get some of that clock off? So that's why for me, like, knowing that, and, and this is another thing, there are five games this year. They've led at halftime, all of them except Baltimore. Baltimore's the only team that whooped them too. Mm-hmm. So that's why I don't feel like when, when people bring that that stat up, I don't. I think it's kind of misleading in terms of... A, a tad, yes. Yeah. But I, I will say this, it goes back to your initial point of, all right, if we're down maybe a couple scores, mm-hmm. I still feel like we got a chance because yeah. we're going to be playing to win. Browns might be playing not to lose. Mm-hmm. The whole looking over your shoulder thing, I'd still have faith if we're down at halftime, maybe yeah. a couple scores, whatever it is, for a comeback. Yeah, I, like I said, I'm, I'm I think very they, confident that the Steelers are going to get it. Now, I just don't know if they have the lead throughout or if they have to come back, but they definitely have the firepower offense, and I think they have the playmakers on defense to make an impact. But I just think that that whole fourth quarter with the Browns, because in each of these games, like even this Colts game, they were still up two scores at one point in the fourth, and it was like, all right, they look good. Oh, no, return. Oh, no, interception. Oh, no, like is it really about to snowball like that? So that's why I was kind of like, I don't, I don't, if I'm the Browns and I'm up like this in this portion of the game, I'm not looking for Baker to throw the ball. I'm going with what's brought me you know, here. But that's, that is somewhat of a limitation no. though. Cause like, even if we are up just to have that ability, like, oh man, mm-hmm. we can maybe pass here on second down and get a completion, mm-hmm. maybe mix it up a little bit mm-hmm. with Ben. 
I think that's a, like, kind of yeah. a limitation to the Browns where you're mm-hmm. just like, all right, we're just going to run it three times and yeah. we're going to punt again. It almost gives the other but team a little been, momentum. But they've been able to be successful in that, though, in terms of not just one. getting it. Yeah, well, in terms of when it is late in the games, they've done a good job of closing them out. That Cowboys game, like I said, that was the outlier. But we saw the Cowboys throughout this year until Dak got hurt. Every game for the Cowboys, they've done that. They started out slow in the first half. Third quarter, something clicks when they're down two scores, and they go crazy after that. That's how they beat the Falcons. They they shouldn't even been in a conversation with the Falcons. But because they had one of them rapid comebacks, it changes. People act like they forget that they were down multiple scores. Like, to me, that's the biggest thing when I'm looking at the Browns. I'm just like, they do a good job of closing out. They When they have those leads late in the game, they do a good job of continuing to put together a five, six, seven play drive. And ultimately, that's why they're sitting at four and one right now, man. It's, it's going to be a good game. It's going to be a good game. I'm excited for it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. We got anything else with the game? Man, uh, I think that is it, man. We talked a little special teams, offense, defense, got our predictions in there. You still riding 27-13. I love it. All I right. have to, dude. You told me you're not superstitious, but it's cool. All right, I'm with it. I'm with it. <laughs> It's cool. I ain't tripping. The beard in 2713. We got to keep rolling with it, man. We got to. Well, let's keep the streak alive there, baby. (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to be, oh man, I'm going to look like Moses or something. No, seriously, bro. Your thing is getting (laughs) extra dense right now, bro. It's cool. And it's cool. That's what what we need to do. Well, at least with the weather, too, starting to break a little bit, that could, it could, you know, be a nice face warmer for you, man. It's like that fall feel, you know? Yeah, man. Chicks dig it. Allegedly, that's what they say. You just need to walk around with an axe and just like a, a cut down tree, just constantly yeah. next to you say so they just know like oh that's deep he for real yeah. that's a man's man <laughs> yeah so if i do look like um if like moses or someone in the bible or something like that it's a good thing absolutely we're, we're man. rolling man we're absolutely rolling. so shoot man that was fun bro it definitely yeah. was definitely was getting people what they need to get people what they wanted man so i'm excited <sighs> enjoy the game enjoy the game man that's all i can say man enjoy it obviously man we appreciate everybody for tuning in unless you had anything else yeah, man, I was I'm good. good. I'm good. Yeah, so with that being said, man, like I said, appreciate everybody for tuning in, all the subscribers, man, everybody that's been listening, following the journey. Enjoy Sunday. It's going to be dope if you're at Hinesville. Go extra crazy. And until next time, peace. peace.